Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Pet and welcome to the Mini Plant Oxford, home of Mini. I'm here today for the first UK drives of the all new Mini Electric. We're even going to get to go inside the factory and see the cars being built. I'm going to hopefully in this video give you all you need to know about not just the car and how it drives but the design, the ethos, the way it's built. It's a super exciting project for Mini. Stay tuned because I have a feeling this is going to be a very special video. Okay, so behind me is a really interesting cutaway model of the new electric Mini, and it gives me a brilliant opportunity to take you on a bit of a behind the skin look at the car. So the first thing we've got here is the engine pack that sits in the front. So it's basically got the same engine, or well, very, very similar engine mountings to an internal combustion engine, be that petrol or diesel. The front crash structure is the same. And as we'll see very shortly when we go into the factory, this car is built on the same line. So they wanted to basically integrate that as much as possible. You can see all of these orange, these are the high voltage cables. So in here you've got the motor, and the gearbox is a single speed gearbox so you don't have the normal clutch pedal and uh, six speed as you would in a normal mini driven through the front wheels um, in terms of power and while we're talking about the front wheels let's take a first look at these kind of electric plug inspired alloys i just think they look wicked but in the back one of the things you can see so uh, under where the fuel tank would be this is a first battery pack here with your charge controllers just there and then you've actually got also battery packs in the transmission tunnel because you don't have an exhaust going down there to the rear of the car obviously now the um, battery pack actually sits in a separate unit that will come up underneath the car um, just after the marriage process again we're going to see that in the factory very shortly clearly the big benefit of having the batteries under the floor where existing things are like fuel tank and transmission tunnel is you still get exactly the same interior space there is no penalty to be paid from an interior space point of view for this car being electric and then one of the big things we'll see when we get driving the car is we've also got a completely new dash with this uh, tft screen in the middle rather than the kind of analog dials you would normally see in a mini but i really like this model because it kind of gets you to see just how innovative the packaging solution is um the the fascinating process for me i think the thing that will make this car a really interesting one for the marketplace is the fact it is built on the same line. So we're going to go into the factory now and have a look. They're building um, three door and five door hatch, Clubman and the E-Mini. We might even see a GP going around there, you never know. But also petrol, diesel and electric variant all in the same factory, all just in time process. And that means that they can scale. Now the initial interest for this car is huge but they honestly don't necessarily know exactly how well it's going to do so they've not had to build a separate factory or a separate facility to make the car they've engineered it to go down the same production line so i reckon we head onto the tour now unbelievably and i wasn't really sure when i came here today unbelievably we've been given permission to take cameras into the factory i cannot tell you how unusual that is it's a proper privilege to be able to take you guys into the mini plant oxford and see these cars being built so we're about to go into the factory and have a good look around so join me for a tour so behind me we've got part of the engine line coming down that line you've got petrol diesel and electric power units and the integration of that is the really difficult bit the thing i love about the electric power unit for the electric mini is it's got very similar engine mountings to the diesel and petrol cars so when the marriage happens and it drops into the chassis it's a far easier process but what they actually did to kind of organize that they used a gaming engine um, one of the guys that works here the associates was a big gamer he says i reckon i can basically marry the environment on that line in virtual reality inside a gaming platform and then they used that to simulate it and to make sure that it worked let's find that absolutely fascinating as an ex-manufacturing engineer I did a degree in manufacturing engineering I just find this stuff really really interesting so that's the engine and the equivalent motor engine power unit so this line behind me now it's not going to be the easiest thing to see so this is where the marriage takes place so you've got normal petrol and diesel cars coming down here and the first thing that takes place 
is that the engine and the car get joined together. Now the same, same mounting positions and so on for the electric motor pack uh, mean that it can all take place on the same line. But then the big difference is as they come down here, the electric car needs to have a battery pack. Now the batteries are mounted underneath the car where you would normally find the fuel tank and on the transmission tunnel. And that's what ta is taking place behind this kind of shrouding there is you've basically got a line of cars. Now we've got an electric car coming along in I think three cars time. Amazingly in this factory, there's a car rolls off the production line every 67 seconds. So each process literally takes 67 seconds. So we're gonna come in here, the motor pack's gonna go in the car first, and then there's a battery pack that's gonna raise up underneath. So here we go. So the cars are now pretty much finished. In fact, the finish line is just there. Really interestingly, we've got this car here, that's actually a John Cooper Works hatch, but the car behind it is an electric Mini. So um, we've got a fantastic demonstration there of basically a whole range. In fact, there's a Clubman just there. So Clubman, hatch, electric Mini, all coming down there. But the car that's caused the stir for everybody is when we got here a minute ago, there was a GP just being finished off. And every now and again, you will see GP bits and bobs lying in the factory. They're not fully making the GP. I think they start proper production either next week or the week after, but they've still got some test cars going through. But yes, there is our electric Mini very nearly being finished. So in a moment, we'll see it drive off out the finish line. And then in the far distance, you can kind of see a whole bunch of cars. They go through the final prep stages when they go out that door where they go on a rolling road they do some they've got a little internal test track with cobblestones they've got an external test track and then 60 percent of the minis made here go on a train um, to a port and then they go on a container abroad so they export 60 percent of everything that comes out of this factory Finally time to get behind the wheel of the car. It's a horrible day here in Oxfordshire, but I've got a, in fact, there's some dodgy geezer in there. Mr. Joe Achilles, good morning, sir. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. So we're off to the Cotswolds to a nice uh, luncheon somewhere. Yep, I, I hope my engine noise isn't disturbing your video. No, have you, can you give us a rev? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go, here's my car. So this is it's in chili red. Um, now there's three trim levels for electric mini. There's basically type one, two, and three. This is the highest spec one. It doesn't have the funky electric plug wheels, which I think just looks so cool. Yeah. Mini electric is available in three equipment levels, one, two, and three. Within each level is a range of personalization options to make it your mini. On the road prices range from 24,400 pounds for level one to 30,400 pounds for level three. Finance example is based on £4,000 down over four years with a 10,000 mile a year limit. As you can see, electric Mini is actually slightly cheaper than the equivalent petrol Cooper S. Right then, here we are inside. I've been looking forward to driving this car for so long. Now the coolest thing and the thing I love most about it already is it just feels like a Mini in here. Obviously the big change from a dash point of view is I've now got this very different TFT screen. The first time I've actually seen it in real life and it's, I really like it from the get go. I'm now in gear, parking brake off. <laughs> oh, that's just so weird. That is just so weird. So um, I'm gonna try and just take you behind the scenes of my first initial reaction to the car. Um, and then hopefully we'll get out on some nice roads, but it's always good when you first jump in a car to see what the initial reaction is like. Now I've driven lots of electric cars um, and I think the first couple of times they freak you out and surprise you, but I don't think I'll be surprised by this um, being electric car, but what I will be surprised is it's a Mini. Right, off we go. Hello. <laughs> wow. It's um it's a pretty nippy little thing this. Already. I mean you've got that instant torque which I love about electric motors anyway. But in the technical briefing one of the things that we were kind of talked through is there's quite a trick traction control system on this car 
Uh, now, normally in a tra in a in a an internal combustion engine car, traction control when it senses the front wheels are slipping, it then sends some signals to kind of cut back power and stop the um, the wheel spin. Because it's an electric car, uh, that process happens much much quicker. But also, it has like a predictive thing as well. So. Um, we're pretty much saying it's unlikely that you will feel wheel slip in this car because, and I've just floored it. Wow, that's wicked, nippy little thing. So now we are out of the town heading into the Cotswolds and we have a slightly better bit of road to really start to get a feel for this car. Um, after having driven it for about half an hour, my instant impressions are the regen braking is really quite severe but I like it you really don't need to use the brake that very much in town driving road and wind noise which is often a problem with electric cars because you don't get it masked by the engine is actually very good um, but just the general sprightliness of the car is what shines through and I'm only in the normal drive setting so very similar to a normal Mini I've got basically a normal drive setting and a sport setting so I've got sport mid green and then green plus and as you step into green you basically get the car backing some systems off just to eke out a little bit more range and then green plus turns things like heated seats off and, and really backs everything to give you that ultimate range or I guess if you ever get caught short and need a charge and there aren't any stations around that's your kind of panic setting stick it in green plus I've been just driving around in mid um, and it's very very sprightly but when you stick it into sport it it becomes a Mini. And the reason I've been really excited and looking forward to driving this car is because I'm a big, big Mini fan. They have a very special character to them. They're really darty and nippy and engaging. And, and that's what I really wanted them to kind of carry through in this car. And that's exactly what they've done, but with an added bonus. So a couple of things that really, um, help this car in terms of its handling. First things first is the weight, center of gravity of this car is much lower than a standard Mini. All the batteries are basically sat underneath me there and underneath me here. So that helps lower the center of gravity of the car, but also changes the weight distribution of the car. So unusually for a front wheel drive car, this is, has perfect 50-50 weight distribution. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, it's just gonna be a compromise. If you are a Mini fan and love the Mini handling thing, and you've been interested in an electric car, that's what this car delivers. It delivers that electric car benefit, but in a Mini. All oh, right, and finally, what looks like a bit of Mini road. It is a foul day here in the UK. Horrible rain, rubbish driving conditions, but, this is the kind of road that I wanted to try and, you know, this is going to be sold as a city car. Lots and lots of people will buy one of these to move around cities and be green, but ultimately you still want to get it on a decent bit of road and you still want it to put a smile on your face and you still, most importantly, want it to feel like a Mini. And from where I'm sat right now, as a very experienced Mini driver, I've got one, I've driven the hatch, I've driven most of the range, it feels just like a Mini. The only difference is, oh man, it's really good. And you can actually, when, when the car kind of gets unsettled a bit in the corners, you really can feel that dip from weight distribution. You, you really can feel that, that lower center of gravity. And it gives the car an almost an edge on top of a normal Mini, dare I say it. I know a lot of kind of ice fans out there will probably think, shock horror, that can't be the case. But actually, it's got all the characteristics and traits of a Mini that you want, but it's got some extra ones too. I've got such a grin on my face, I, I kind of expected it, but... Let's have a bit of a discussion about range, because I think with electric cars, the most common debating point, talking point, worry maybe, is range and range anxiety. And the headline figures for this car aren't great when you look at it from a range point of view. 
Uh, I think realistically, although I think mini quote, you know, nearly 150 miles of range, realistically I reckon 120 miles of range for this car. And obviously that depends greatly on things like the temperature and how you drive it. But most people, if, if we think about this as the primary car in your family, it might struggle. But the second car in most people's families probably never does big long journeys. The average journey is probably 20, 30 miles. And that's certainly borne out by the research that many have done. So as a second car in a family, this would be just a perfect option and you would probably never actually need to worry about that range. You could charge it up at night um, with a seven kilowatt charger at home. Uh, you'd wake up in the morning, you'd have a full battery pack and you could go to work and back, move around town, whatever you needed to do, get back home, plug it in and you'd have a full car the next day. And I reckon for 90% of journey profiles, that's exactly what this car would do. And oh my goodness me, what a shame the weather's so grotty because this road's brilliant. Um, clearly, if you want to go on a longer journey than that, you're going to have to plan in some public charging stops. Uh, so this car has a, it can do 50 kilowatt charging um, from 0 to 80 percent charge um, on a 50 kilowatt charge. It takes just over 30 minutes, which is just long enough for a coffee. Um, and like all electric cars, it's that last 20 percent that takes the time. So. You know, you probably on a public charging infrastructure, you wouldn't charge it beyond 80% because you need to top up all the cells and, and that's the bit that takes time. So I think a 0 to 100% charge in this on a 50 kilowatt charger is well over an hour. So again, you learn, and I've spent lots of time in their EVs now, you learn the kind of tactics to EV charging in public. But I think that, you know, Try and put the range thing to one side of this car, because actually that, for me, is not what this car is about. This car is certainly nipping around town, it's pacey, but on a nice bit of road like this, put it in sport mode, and it's a really engaging car to drive. It is a Mini, it has all the characteristics of Mini. Oh, I really love it. And really interestingly, from a price point of view, we've talked about the different levels. If you compare this, with a similarly specced Cooper S, it's actually a bit cheaper. So you don't pay the price penalty for having an electric car that you do in some brands. Like for like, spec for spec, the Mini Electric is gonna be cheaper than its equivalent Cooper S. Just, just think about that for a while. As far as the interior is concerned, I really like the new uh, TFT screen. Uh, it kind of makes it obviously an electric Mini and different to the petrol and diesel variants and they've kept the central screen as a nod to that and everything else feels very Mini. And I know why, why Mini have done that, because you sit in this car and it just feels like you're being in a Mini. I guess my only criticism might be this interior, much as I love it, don't get me wrong, it is feeling a little bit dated now and, and I just wonder whether or not it, it could have been made just that little bit more modern, that little bit more funky. I mean, if you sit in something like a Model 3 Tesla, that's just so out there. I'm not suggesting for one minute they went that far. But I think it could have maybe just been a little bit more edgy and a little bit more electric. But I do understand the thinking behind it. Well, we have had some beautiful food for lunch and all the cars have been charging while we've been inside, hiding away from the rain. But. I wanted to bring you my final impressions of the car. I knew that this would be a good little car, but I never realized it would be quite as good. It, it has all the attributes I love from a Mini. The looks, the interior styling, the go-kart feel, the drivability, but it's an electric car. And I think that combination of that, along with a, a relatively achievable purchase price, they're not that different from a, a standard uh, Cooper S, I hats off to you Mini, I think you're going to sell lots and lots of these. But I have to say a huge thank you to Mini UK for the invite today to come along and drive the new uh, Mini Electric. Very special opportunity, I hope you've enjoyed it, certainly a very special opportunity to get to film inside the factory. That is very, very rare access indeed. But anyway guys, I'd love to know what you think about Mini Electric, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I've now got a lovely drive back to the mini plant Oxford, but I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care.
drive safe.